In today's video, we're going to be setting up our brand new Jazz Miner X4Q. Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is that we are going to plug in our Ethernet cord and I've got it plugged into my switch down there. And then you're gonna plug in your power cord. And after getting that plugged in, you're then just gonna turn it on. I've got two of these now. I've already got this up and going. Now we're gonna to jump to the computer and I'm gonna walk you through setting up the settings so this can get to mining. Now what you wanna do is you want to log into a computer that is on the same network as your Jazz Miner so that you can set it up. Once you log into a computer, open a web page and log into your IP modem slash router. I have AT&T two gig fiber, so mine is gonna be AT&T. Once you, and also if you don't know the information to log into your particular modem or router, the information's on the bottom of the, uh, the router. It'll have an address and a password, log in and you should have something similar to what you see here. Obviously I'm gonna have my important information blurred out, but once you log in, you're gonna have a couple of different options of things that you can do. And all we're looking for is the IP address for the Jazz Miner. Once we get the IP address, we can log in. Here, I've got an option that says device list. So I select that and it's gonna bring up all the devices that are connected to my internet. Once I come here, I'm gonna do Control F to bring up the search. I'm gonna tap in, uh, type in Jazz Miner, and it's gonna let me know that there are two Jazz Miners on my network. And that's because I've got one that's already set up, I set up a couple of days ago, and then now the brand new one. So, and I know which IP address the old one is, and so I need to go to the new one. So. I'm just gonna select the up arrow and it's gonna bring up the newest one with the IP address. I'm going to highlight, copy, open up a new page. And, and log into the Jazz Miner. The very first box that you're gonna get is, it wants you to give the username and password. Now the very first time that you log in is going to be set to the default username and password, which is R-O-O-T for the username and the same thing for the password, R-O-O-T, and then just do sign in, we'll save sure. Now we are logged into the miner and you can see the, what type of miner you have and the version is going to be the, uh, firmware that you have. Now, because I did set up another one a couple of days ago, I know there's a newer firmware, but I'm gonna do a, a separate video on how to update your firmware of your Jazz Miner. For this one, we're just gonna get this one up and going. You're gonna see your network information right here. And over on the left, you're gonna have a couple of different options. And one of the, the options that I would recommend is to change your password, which you can do right here in admin. You can just come in here, put in, you know, root, R-O-O-T, and then whatever your new password is and update. And then that way going forward, your username is root and your password is whatever your new password is. If I come to minor, I'm sorry, let me start with status. Let's go over a few things. Status. This is gonna give us a summary of what's going on with our minor. Now, this miner's not set up, so it's showing disconnected, zero hash rate, average, real time. And it's letting us know what pools, we're, we haven't set it up yet. Boards, there are two boards with eight chips on them inside this miner. And it just gives some more information. Uh, fans, it lets us know the fan speed. Once we get this set up, this fan speed will uh, jump up dramatically. Now what we wanna do is we wanna set up the miner on a pool and um, a coin. Once you come to the miner settings, 
it's going to have pool one, pool two, pool three. And the reason for three pools is it'll, it'll look for pool one first. It'll mine to that. If that pool fails or it can't connect, it'll then go to pool two. If that fails or it can't connect, it'll go to pool three. I'm only going to do pool one. I haven't had an issue with not being able to connect to a pool before. Down at the bottom, advanced, you can select what coin to mine. This miner came out when Ethereum was proof of work still. So you could mine Ethereum and then obviously your, uh, your frequency that you can change, kind of overclock it a little bit. But Ethereum or Ethereum Classic, this can mine Ethereum Classic no problem because of the DAG size. The RAM inside this miner is five gigabytes. The DAG size that Ethereum and, and some of the other proof of work coins associated with Ethereum is over five gigabytes. Therefore, you can't mine those coins with this miner. You have to mine an Ethereum Classic or an Ethereum algorithm where the DAG size is less than five, five gigs. All right, so next I'm gonna get the pool information and my wallet information, and then we're going to set this miner up and get it to mining. Okay, the first thing that we wanna get is the URL to the pool that we wanna to mine to. I'm gonna be mining to two miners today. So just go to the two miners website, scroll down and locate your server information for your area. I'm in the USA, so I'm just gonna simply copy the server information highlight, copy. Then I'm gonna go back to my miner, right click, paste as plain text. Now that's the URL. The next thing we need is the wallet. And the wallet is going to be whatever you wanna to mine to. Again, I highly advise against mining to an exchange, mine to like an Exodus wallet, a Zellcore wallet, whatever other wallet out there or a cold wallet like a trezor but definitely keep this somewhere safe so i'm going to be mining to my exodus wallet i've got a video on how to set up an exodus wallet if you want i'll leave that link in the description so i'm going to go get that information right now now i have put in my information for my ethereum classic wallet in exodus this wallet address starts at the beginning and it goes all the way to the period. The period is important because the period is gonna separate our wallet address from the name that we are gonna give our miner. This helps to identify the miner in the future as far as what hash rate are we doing and does this particular miner have any issues? So you'll put in your wallet address, you'll put a period, and then after the period, you will put the name of your miner and it can be a long name like what I've got right here, or it can be a short name, whatever you want. And the way that I do my miner is I give it a name from the Matrix uh, movie. I, I really like the Matrix movie, so I use characters names from those movies to identify which miner is which. Then I put a dash and I put what is the name brand of the miner I'm using? And then what is the model? of the, uh, the miner that I'm using. That just helps me identify very quickly which miner is doing what and if I need to give it any attention. After you do that, under password, you don't really need a password, but I'm just gonna put a lowercase x in there just in case. Scroll down, make sure you have uh, your correct coin selected because I have an Ethereum Classic address. I need to make sure this is on an Ethereum Classic coin. If I've got Ethereum Classic address, but I leave it on an ETH coin, will never get paid. It, it'll just be mining aimlessly, nothing. So just make sure that this is changed. Ethereum Classic address to an Ethereum Classic uh, uh, wallet to an Ethereum Classic coin. And the frequency, you can put this at 200, 225. And then once you're, you've made the changes that you want, simply update. After clicking the update button, it'll take it a few seconds to update the miner. The one thing you wanna do is you wanna come up to the status of your miner and you're going to see uh, some changes from the first time that you came to this page. You'll see that it's connected. We wanna make sure it's connected. It'll show you uh, 
how long it's been connected. Also, you'll see, you'll notice that it'll say there's zero on the hash rate as far as real time and the average. Don't worry about this. This takes about 25, 30 minutes for the miner to download the DAG and update to the network. So don't worry that this says zero. What you do want to make sure is that your pool information and your user information is correct. And under status, it says using. You'll see that it's already doing some work. It's got uh, eight jobs that it's done. We're still waiting on accepted shares. You're gonna see your board, uh, the frequency that I set it at. Again, in the future, in about 30 minutes, we'll come back or, or after 30 minutes and see what this, this mega hash is going to be. The fan speed, right now it's saying 690 and 600, but this will update again. So we're gonna let this sit and we're gonna come back uh, 30 minutes or so and make sure everything's working okay and that the hash rate is what we want it to be. Here we are after an hour and 38 minutes and this is where the miner's at. You can see that the hash rate real time and the hash rate average they have shown up. Now this is gonna be substantially higher than what it should be when you first start out because the miner's just settling in. Again, uh, maybe in about 24 hours, you'll start to get real true numbers on what these are gonna be, but we are currently hashing, which is good. You can see that the status is using, we've had 733 jobs, 611 accepted shares. Um, come on down, we can see the frequency we've got it set at. What each board, remember there are two boards inside, what each board is hashing at and the speed of the fans that's keeping that miner quiet and cool. Those have jumped from 600 and something up to 1710 and 1650 respectively. So this miner is good. The only other thing left to do is to update the firmware to the latest firmware. That way we're getting the most efficiency and that will be done in another video. The dashboard for the Jazz Miner is really easy to use and you can be up and mining in no time at all. So I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.